Foot and mouth disease is caused by a virus from the Picornavirus family. It is a very tiny particle. Millions would fit on a pinhead. There are seven different types of foot and mouth disease virus known as serotypes and multiple strains of virus within each serotype. Each virus is made up of a sealed outer shell called a capsid, which is constructed from four main proteins, VP1, 2, 3 and 4. These proteins assemble to create subunits. Five of these then join together to form building blocks called pentamers. Together, 12 of these building blocks make a complete capsid, which encases the virus's genetic material. All viruses have genetic material. Some have DNA like us, but foot and mouth disease virus has one single strand of RNA. Foot and mouth disease virus infects cloven hooved, two toed animals, such as cows, sheep, pigs, and goats. It also infects wild animals like buffalo. The virus may be inhaled and enters the cells of the tongue or respiratory system. It can also enter through open sores and wounds. It invades the cell using a protein loop on VP1 to bind to a receptor on the cell surface called integrin. These receptors grab the virus and draw it into the cell. Once inside the cell, the virus breaks apart, releasing its RNA. The RNA then hijacks the cell's machinery, called ribosomes, to make two new strands of virus proteins. The first strand of protein is cut into pieces, which reform to make the capsid pentamers. The second strand of proteins is broken up and used to create more RNA. The capsid proteins then surround the RNA to create a new virus particle. Hundreds of thousands of these viruses are created. The virus particles then burst out of the cell, ready to infect new cells. Foot and mouth disease is highly contagious and can be passed from one animal to another by direct contact or by contact with contaminated objects. When animals are infected with foot and mouth disease, their symptoms include fever, reduced appetite and blisters on their feet, mouth, nose and teats, causing lameness and excess salivation. The disease may cause abortions in pregnant cows and can result in death, though this is rare and mainly in the young. Foot and mouth disease is a major problem globally, causing huge economic losses and threats to food security. It is constant in some countries, but absent in others. Some countries vaccinate to prevent the disease spreading, but this approach has its own disadvantages. Current vaccines contain foot and mouth disease viruses that are inactivated so they cannot cause infection. However, these vaccines are expensive to produce as they require special production facilities, can only protect against one serotype and need refrigeration. New synthetic vaccines which are being researched at the Purbright Institute contain a more stable version of the capsid and no genetic material. This means they would potentially be cheaper to produce because they don't need special facilities. They are easier to store and transport and could potentially protect against all serotypes. As well as research into the virus and future vaccines, the Institute is the world reference laboratory for foot and mouth disease, playing an essential role in the diagnostic surveillance and control of the disease globally. We have outbreaks of FMDV in free countries uh, from time to time, but FMDV is an important disease uh, every day throughout the world. It's one of the uh, biggest inhibitors of uh, agricultural production in many areas of the world, particularly India, Africa, China. It's a huge problem. So the importance of the Institute is that we um, monitor 
the borders of Europe. We're in a state of preparedness, ready to respond to an outbreak as quickly as possible if, if it should occur. We have a global role in helping control those disease outbreaks in many parts of the world, partnering with, with uh, many different people in different countries. The new vaccine that we're trying to develop could, could really um, fulfil two purposes. One, the best way of protecting the UK agriculture from the incursion of foot and mouth disease is to control it at source. The other um, possibility is that because of the stability of the vaccine, um, we can, uh, that vaccine could be stored ready to be used in case of an outbreak. Another area beyond vaccine development that we do, we do a lot of work and have made significant impact is on disease transmission. The, the biggest problem with FMDV is that it's transmitted so quickly. It probably spreads faster than any other virus we know, and that includes human viruses. There's a particular problem in Africa because there's a wildlife reservoir, which is the African buffalo. They can shed virus for, for many months, maybe even years, and then transmit virus to, uh, to cattle. Um, the buffalo don't show any clinical signs, so we've been doing a lot of work trying to understand how and why virus persists in the buffalo and how it transmits to cattle and to, to, to improve those control measures. We work as a global reference laboratory for foot and mouth disease and other uh, vesicular diseases and uh, provide a service both for the UK government, uh, the European Commission, as well as um, a number of different organisations outside of the European context. We're probably the largest global centre which undertakes work to monitor the spread of foot and mouth disease virus. We receive samples from countries where the disease is endemic and undertake support work to characterise the strains that are circulating in those countries and try to uh, put all that information together to understand where new threats are coming from and um, what tools might be used to control the disease in those settings. So we have a whole range of different uh, technologies that can be used for FMD diagnosis. Uh, they range from um, uh, very old established methods such as virus culture, which is still a gold standard method that we use for, for diagnosis. Those have been increasingly supplemented by other and newer technologies over the last few years. So now we're heavily involved in using molecular technologies for both detection of the agent as well as characterization of field strains. There are now a number of what they call roadmaps in these regional areas where uh, countries are working together to better um, imagine where the disease is coming from as well as to understand how the disease is maintained and circulating in those regions. And I think the work of the World Reference Laboratory is quite critical to those roadmaps because we provide um, technical support as well as epidemiological advice to better understand it, the way in which the virus is spreading and uh, we are very much the global centre for, for, the, for the background information relating to FMD globally. So I'm a postdoctoral researcher here at, the, at Purbright and I actually work within a wider team um, of researchers that are based both here at Purbright and also at the University of Leeds and at Edinburgh. So we're looking at um, genome factors that affect the replication of the coronavirus foot and mouth disease virus or FMDV for short. What I'm looking at more specifically um, is one of these ways the, the, the virus genome changes. Each time the genome is replicated, it mutates. And so you can imagine a single um, infected cell um, contains thousands and thousands and thousands of viral particles. Each of these viral particles contain a slightly different genome. So in this way, the virus allows itself, um, it has lots of different options. So when it encounters an environmental change, it stands a chance that one of those viral particles containing one of those genome options will survive. But there is a fine balance between um, producing enough mutation that allows the virus to adapt and um, too many mutations that actually the virus effectively kills itself. So what I'm looking at is um, basically better understanding that balance.